in color. The continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington, Patricia Morrow as Rita Harrington, James Douglas as Stephen Cord. Betty Cord has coaxed her husband Stephen into a night out in an effort to regain the closeness they had shared before the arrival in the Peyton house of Adrian Van Leiden. For Betty, the evening has been a success. Stephen has been attentive and has calmed her fear that he's becoming involved with Adrian. But for Stephen, the evening has been a charade. Tell him to shape up or you'll go back to Shakespeare. <laughs> oh, Stephen. I had the most wonderful evening and the dinner was delicious, thank you. You know, it takes so little to make you happy. It takes you. Now, why don't you fix us a nightcap, something for two straws? All right. <laughs> Drink. I never have more than one drink. But I do like that to be very large, <laughs> very strong, and very cold. <laughs> I'm going to stop taking you to movies. Why? Too impressionable. <laughs> fix a nightcap. Yes, I heard that too. Did you have a good time? Delightful. And you? Judge Fisher's rather a bore. That drafty old house of his is like a sieve. I, I think I caught a chill. Well, how about something medicinal? to get the tea on its feet? Yes. I'd like to talk to you first. I don't think that now is a terribly good time. Well, no time will be a terribly good time. All right. Now, look. There are moments in a person's life that just happen. The time, the place, add up to something that got out of hand. And the point is that a moment is just that. It's over before it starts. In other words, look, Adrian, I'm a married man. That happens to be true. So I've noticed. like to know what's going on inside that head of yours. At the moment, the beginning of a head cold. Why are you marrying Martin Payton? Why not? Because you don't feel anything for him. You couldn't. There are other reasons for marriage. The money? Money is no novelty to you. It's something else. You know, it's fascinating to me the way some men have a talent for making simple things complicated. You haven't answered my question. Why should I? I marry him, that's all. And after you marry him, what then? I'm going upstairs. Now, your 
type isn't really unique, you know. And just what is my type? I'll tell you. You're the girl who knows just when to walk between a man and a bright light. Just when to curl up in an easy chair. And just when to have a sore neck that needs rubbing. Now, that's how you get your kicks, isn't it? So it really doesn't make any difference who you're married to. That's a vulgar thing to say. Well, it's a vulgar thing to do. And only women who hate men can do it. Shut up. You keep your voice down. Don't let me go. Now, why did you come to the beach? Why? You know why. For kicks, you said so. For the truth it was, wasn't it? Yes, that's all it was. That's all it ever is. Well, why me? Why me? Why not you? You're a man, aren't you? And any man will do, isn't that what you said? Any man. It's quite a joke, isn't it? Stephen Cord. I never lost control. Never felt anything. He hadn't planned with the precision of a micrometer. Being played for a fool by a bored society girl with a couple of slow weeks to kill. And going for it. Going all the way. You don't understand anything. No, honey. I understand everything. Perfectly. Sees how it's you. Step right in. <clears throat> Get them while they're fresh. Isn't this cozy? Well, why don't you grab a section of the paper while Rita gets through uh, burning the bacon? Oh, Mom, be sure and look in the bedroom and in the closets. In the oven. Oh, we might be hiding in the oven. I was just passing by. With some buns. I know. Would you two like me to leave? Her father's back. Yeah, I know. Oh, be sure and look under the doormat on your way out. Hey, come on now, Rita. That's not the way to talk to your mother. Look, I wasn't spying on you. I thought we settled this. We did. You just want to make sure I'm not cheating. I just want to see my daughter. That's what my father said. Well, even though you didn't ask me, I agree with your mother. Well, that makes three of us, so what are we arguing about? I'll get it. Will you just get out of here and let me make breakfast? Just slow down, okay? You told me he was a cheat and a liar, and I believe you. I said I'm not going to see him. What do I have to do, take a blood oath or something? Hey, uh, look, she just worried about you. Oh, I don't worry about something like that. I'm perfectly capable of taking care of myself. Oh. Here, I've got a rag. No, no, no. Uh, Just stay right where you are. You're leave me alone! alone. Yeah. Oh, hello, Norman. I'm sorry I got here a little early. I hope it doesn't upset anything. No, you're just in time. We're having a little family discussion. Understand. No, I don't understand. Can't you see what you're doing in this girl? But her father's... Her father has nothing to do with the condition she's in now. Ada's gonna take her the rest of the day to get over it. What do you want us to do? Well, if you want her back in the hospital, you just keep it up. If not, I suggest you drop the subject. You know, after... 
after everything's said, there's one thing you can't change. He is my father. <laughs> like this all week, that run me out of town. Um, um, grab a chair, <laughs> if you can. No, 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 that's all right. Listen, I just, uh, I'm just walking by to get my father, that's all. You know, if they make these Sunday papers any bigger, I'm gonna have to start reading them on Thursday. <laughs> well, you see your ad? Yeah, thanks for the placement. Oh, shit, no replies so far. Well, we gotta give it time. You caught me right in the middle of my chores. Boy, what I wouldn't give for one of those steam presses. The kind they have in prison? With one of those babies, I could turn out 20 or 30 shirts an hour. With this loser, it's just the opposite. It's one shirt in 20 or 30 hours. Did you ever hit the laundry when you were in? No, the library. Ah, oh, you white-collar workers. <laughs> well, we all wore the same color uniform, Eddie. Do you mind if I yak about those old days? Huh. It's the only thing I got to yak about. Well, I tell you, if I uh, hear of anything at all, Eddie, any kind of a job at all, I'll certainly let you know. Oh, don't put yourself out on a limb. No, 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 I won't, I won't. Hey, have you seen my father since you've been back? No. Well, he's just down the hall. Come on. Okay. Hey, Dad. Ready. <laughs> Dad, you remember Eddie Jack. Mr. Carson? Hello. How you been? I've been holding up. Eddie's, uh, Eddie's coming back here to stay, Dad. So I heard. Well, uh, you better not keep those trout waiting. They get pretty impatient. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I'll see you later, Thanks again. <laughs> 